Hey yo guys, how are you doing? The time has finally come. While the PS3 is my favorite PlayStation console, the PS2 is a close second, like by an inch. So today we are going to take a look at the top 10 underrated PlayStation 2 action games. Graphics may age, but a good game can be enjoyed for the rest of time. And there is a reason why the PlayStation 2 is considered the best console of all time by many. And with that said, grab yourself some pizza and a coffee, kick back and make yourself comfortable, and let's get the kick out of gaming. Okay, let's kick off this list with a PlayStation 2 exclusive action game that will truly give you the kick in gaming. Rise to Honor. Jet Li is one of the OG Hong Kong martial arts stars of the early 2000s. And when I learned that this legend is getting his own PlayStation 2 exclusive Kung Fu movie game, I was on fire. It took some time getting used to the controls, but there is nothing quite as satisfying as fending off half a dozen goons from all sides with a perfect combo of strikes, dodges and counters. In between mobbing the floor with bad guys, there is a bit of shooting, running and the mandatory stealth section to add a cinematic flavor to the game. But the majority of Rise to Honor sticks to what it does best, letting you deliver a whirlwind storm of kicks and punches. And like all great martial art movies, this game is over before you know it. And while we're at the topic of Asian inspired action games, the next game on this list could have ripped its story straight from Ghost in the Shell. Oni. Do you ever wondered what Rockstar Games and Bungie were doing in the early 2000s? Before Bungie made Halo, they made this hidden gem set in a cyberpunk world. But what sets this game apart is the great combat mechanics and seamless mixing of close quarters combat and ranged weapons. While the shooting was pretty mediocre, the fighting in Oni is incredibly satisfying. Sprinting towards an enemy, spinning around him, snapping his neck and kicking the enemies around him never felt better. And I was really impressed by the huge open levels on the PlayStation 2. Oni does not confine us to fighting small groups of enemies in small arenas, each area is fully open to explore. The 14 levels are of various sizes, some are large enough to fit an entire building into it. Oni is an extremely addictive fighting game with some very cool cyberpunk storytelling and awesome martial arts combat. And with awesome martial arts combat, we smoothly transition into one of my childhood classics, Naruto Ultimate Ninja. I freaking love Naruto. Back in the day, Naruto Rasengan his way right into my heart. Watching him making his way from the village outsider to the Hokage was so satisfying. Naruto's never give up attitude never failed to motivate me. And the series had so many unforgettable moments. When Rock Lee dropped his weights to obliterate Gara's defense with hyper speed, I got goosebumps and still get them every time I rewatch the low quality YouTube upload. But it's one of the greatest scenes in anime history. It brings my will to hit the gym back faster than Kakashi Sensei can hit this poor kid's upper body with his lightning blade. Now, that begs the question. Is Ultimate Ninja any good? And the answer is yes, it's a pretty dope tie-in fighting game. Battles are fast paced and can get extremely intense. The simplistic controls are easy to learn but tricky to master. And gave Ultimate Ninja that perfect character arc that helped me grow as a joy pet ninja. It also captures the look and feel of Naruto perfectly. I highly recommend you give Naruto Ultimate Ninja a try. And while you at it, check out this guilty pleasure game of mine. I just had to include my favorite hidden light gun gem on the PlayStation 2, Vampire Knight. We're here at last. Yes. 
how long I've waited for this moment. It's House of the Dead, but with vampires. And it hits all the railgun shooter tropes you might expect. A story that doesn't bother being overly complicated, great co-op gameplay, so bad it's good voice acting, lots of ammo reloading and plenty of vampires to disintegrate. And Vampire Knight really excels at offering tons of enemy and level variety and a lot of challenge. Finding that extra items and health packs in nearby boxes is nearly impossible unless you're a highly trained vampire hunter as the boxes enter and leave the screen in a matter of milliseconds. But overall I always have an absolute blast every time I'm returning to Vampire Night. This should be a permanent addition to any light gun shooter collection and I highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't played it yet. And while we're at the topic of hidden and underrated games on the PlayStation 2, let's talk about Headhunter Redemption. You might have played the first Headhunter game on Dreamcast or PlayStation 2. Headhunter Redemption plays out as a third person shooter action game in a future cyberpunk world, which feels like it came straight out of a sci-fi novel, with an interesting backstory around the conflict of a divided society above and below and we're in between as a young female headhunter with nothing to lose. The gameplay needs some getting used to because Headhunter Redemption has similar mechanics to Metal Gear Solid, where it's better to sneak and hide behind boxes to get the advantage on your enemies, especially since the target reticule needs a second to stabilize, which annoyed me at first, but once I got used to it, it made the fight so much more intense and added that extra spice, which made for quite a unique flavor. All in all, it looks great, has an ass-kicking soundtrack and best of all, really fun and diverse gameplay. And after our adventurous trip to the future, it's time for a laid-back boat trip on the open sea in Cold Fear. If you're a fan of survival horror games, then give Cold Fear a try. We and our coast guard bodies are dropped on the confined space of a Russian boat in the middle of a storm on the ocean. And wouldn't you know it, things go south pretty fast. Cold Fear is great at building up atmosphere. Being trapped on a vessel in the middle of the ocean together with a crew of crazy Russians on a strict living person diet leads to a lot of dead bodies and obviously something sinister is going on behind our backs. Cold Fear has a very good storyline backed by some great enemy design and some awesome scares. The only downside I could think of is the save system. You can only save your game after key moments, which means if you die in between it's back to the last save point, which could be quite the backtrack. But the graphics, controls, weapons and gameplay are top notch. This is a must have game if you're into survival horror. But make sure to take a few breaks during the game if you get seasick. Because Cold Fear totally immerses you, with the boat rolling on the waves and the rain pouring down while you answer the dark bowels of the ship which provide an eerie backdrop for horrible events to happen. I don't know what you're still doing here? Get on that boat and blast some creepy goons. And from the stormy sea we dive into the blazing New York nightlife to fight our way to the top in Def Jam. Fight for New York. Oh the good old PS2 era of 3D fighting games. The fun I had while fighting my way to the top of the gritty streets of boombox hip hop beats filled New York's underworld was amazing. Def Jam New York is one of the most visceral, compelling fighting experiences out there, packed with a solid story mode, awesome and brutal gameplay, great 2000s hip hop artist cast and one of the most fun multiplayer experiences in gaming, period. This game rivals most of the modern fighting games out there today. But most importantly, you can throw people under the train in the subway level. This is wild! And now, friends, romance, gamers, lend me your controllers and hear my word. 
Shadow of Rome is truly what a gladiator game should be, with a great story, lengthy cutscenes and bloody good gameplay to go along with it. The opening scene leads you into the arena and it quickly initiates you into the blood splattering and heart pumping fun, dodging at the last second as an oversized maul drives into the sandy ground really gets your adrenaline levels to new heights. Shadow of Rome offers numerous ways to fight, attack and kill and I keep finding more. Sometimes we leave the arena to fill in the backstory and we take on another character who is trying to channel his inner snake and find out who assassinated Julius Caesar. The stealth levels can be a bit tricky and frustrating, but all in all the story makes the battles in the arena so much more intense and meaningful. It's an all around awesome game, especially in the survival mode. Holding up your bloody hands to the crowd so they throw you food or unique weapons? Gameplay mechanics like these give Shadow of Rome the extra edge. And while we discover our inner gladiator, why not take a trip to the Old West in the next game, simply called Gun. In this arcadey version of Red Dead Redemption, we are tasked to bring some peace to the Old West in the only way we know by unloading our six-shooter into every goon we meet along the way. Gun's story, while short, will hook you right from the start. It's fast-paced action combined with a fast-paced storyline. Suspenseful and always action-packed. Whether we slicing bandits apart with a tomahawk or trembling through gangs on horseback, Gun still plays fluidly and responsive. It's a pity that most of the missions are really short. I would say you could finish Gun in around 4 hours, but since these 4 hours are action packed to the max, it didn't bother me at all. And like the Hollywood classics, Gun has some of the best voice acting I've ever heard in a game, thanks to a badass lineup of AAA voice actors. Of course, measuring it in today's standards, some of the towns can be a bit empty, but for a PlayStation 2 title, it's still pretty damn impressive. And impressive is the right word to describe the first place on this list as well. A game that nobody seems to know about. A western game with Samurai. Properly titled Samurai Western. <laughs> What should I tell you? It's a samurai versus a bunch of cowboys. What could go possibly wrong with such an awesome match? Not much actually. Samurai Western is a unique idea for a game. The concept is simple. We control a samurai wandering the west in search for another renegade warrior. Along the way and despite our best efforts to stick to our peaceful roots, we make a few enemies. Okay. Almost everyone in town becomes our sworn enemy. But if you have to bring a knife to a gunfight, this is the knife to bring. The idea is to deflect bullets with our swords or dodge them and then turn those goons into spraying crimson fountains to gain points. The more experience you have, the faster you level up. You guys know the drill. After each level, we unlock new weapons and outfit parts and let's just say Frank West would be proud. And like that rising, these outfits come with extra perks for our stats. And if you still feel overwhelmed by the enemies, you can enter a master mode that lets you kill every goon in sight with just a single strike. I have to mention that there is a bit of grinding and replaying levels to do to keep up with the leveling, but it's kept to a minimum. And I would highly recommend you give this hidden gem a try. If you enjoy the humor and style of God Hand, then Samurai Western is the game for you. It's the perfect arcadey pick up and play game. And with that said, our first trip to the adventurous land of the PlayStation 2 hidden gems ends. But it doesn't have to be our last trip, because the PlayStation 2 has one of the largest game libraries out there and there are still tons of hidden gems to discover. So let me know, which game did you play the most on your PlayStation 2? Which game would you recommend? And real talk, which is the best console, PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3? Or is it Xbox for Life? 
let me know in the comments down below and as always if you enjoyed this video kick the like button sharing is caring and subscribe but most importantly have a great day and get the kick out of gaming well well it looks like i underestimated you we shall meet again